السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو اینادر کمپیٹر سائنس لیکچر ٹوڈے وی وڈ بی ڈسکسنگ سیکشن ٹو پوائنٹ ٹو ایررز ان ڈیٹا ٹرانسمیشن اور ایررز ان ڈیٹا کمیونکیشن ایررز ان ٹرانسمیشن ڈیورنگ ٹرانسمیشن دیر ایز آلویز ارسک آف ڈیٹا کرپشن ڈیٹا گین اور ڈیٹا لاس These errors can occur during transmission due to either interference means when you when uh, the signals are traveling on a cable then there is always a chance that if there is another cable nearby so due to induced electricity or due to um, electric uh, the other cables also carrying an electric signal and their magnetic field or induction field some current can sweep into the cable that is uh, carrying the data signals and because of that you can get electrical interference or noise uh, and as a result your data can be corrupted or it can even be lost you might have noticed on a stormy weather when you call somebody uh, sometimes there is a lot of noise in the background because of this because the signals are traveling in the air and the uh, in the atmosphere there is also lightning on a stormy weather so because of that the signals gets disturbed and it causes noise in the background next lost packets in data or packet switching well, we have studied about packet hopping now let's suppose a system is not following a hop number and the packet just keep on roaming from here to there uh, endlessly it might get delivered to a destination in between of another transmission so what would happen it would be added into the new transmission and thus the actual message would would be corrupted <laughs> For example, a packet was just roaming here and there, here and there. Uh, it was a lost packet inside a network. Now, after a few days or a few hours or some time later, another transmission occurred and this packet somehow got mixed up with that transmission and was delivered to the new transmission's destination. Now, this would add uh, an extra packet to the ongoing, tra ongoing transmission thus it can cause data loss or data gain means some additional data has been included or added into the transmission last but not the least another reason for error can be skewing of data which happens in parallel data transmission we have discussed that uh, when you are sending data over multiple lines so sometimes the order in which you send the bits or basically uh, the number of bits which are sent together they don't always reach their destination at the same time and sometimes they are out of sync this can cause data corruption as bits arrive out of synchronization number fourth bit arrives before the second at second place and number uh, second and third bit arrives after that so it alters the message Uh, you sent 1011 and over there it is received at 1101 so the message is totally opposite of what was intended now there are some methods to detect if there have been any error during the transmission and the first of those method is a parity check what happens inside a parity check is that all the ones in bit stream are counted there are two possible uh, systems in parity check odd parity and even parity in odd parity the bit is bit stream must have an odd number of one bits while in even parity the total number of one bits should be even parity bit is transmitted before the bit stream for example here is a bit stream from here till here and if it is following odd parity so 1 2 3 4 these are even number of ones so we will just add one as the parity bit to make it odd 1 2 3 4 5 5 now it is odd and if it is even parity 1 2 3 4 it is already there are even number of ones so we simply add a zero 
one is added as parity bit to make the total number of ones in a bit stream odd and zero is added in this example as number of one bits were already even in the bit stream. Now this type of parity check is best to de detect if only one bit has been switched or changed during transmission or if there is only a single bit error. Parity check is not successful if two or more bits are altered during transmission which is known as a burst error. Hence 2D parity is used. It is an advanced form of parity check which is known as 2D or two dimensional parity. A parity byte marks the end of transmission. In 2D parity, parity of each row and column is calculated and sent along the message. The row containing parities of all the columns is the parity byte. Each row and column is checked respectively. The row with a parity bit mismatch and next the column with a parity bit error may marks the location of bit that has been altered during transmission. See, you get a parity block like this, okay? 1 byte, 2 byte, 3 byte, 4 byte and at the end there is a parity byte which is basically the parity for all of these columns. Now 2D parity can catch 1 bit, 2 bit, 3 bit and at most 4 bit errors. Now examiner in the, qu in the question paper is going to give you this block and he is going to tell you that the system follows even parity or odd parity like it's written over here that it follows even parity. So first of all we check all the rows 1, 2, 3, 4. This is correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again it is an even number so this is correct. 1, 2, even number correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is wrong. So what we do is we either shade this row or we are either put a circle around it like i have already s uh, put a circle around it and then one two three four this is also even this is correct now we check each row one two this is correct one two three four correct one two correct one two three four correct one this is wrong hence i have circled it 1 2 3 4 again correct 1 2 again correct 1 2 correct now the point at which these both shadings or these both circles intersect is the point where means this one this is the point or this is the bit which has been altered during transmission means when so how you write this byte 4 is the one which have error and column 5 also has error and the point at which they both intersect that bit is wrong means instead of if this is a zero this sh it should be a one and if there was a one then the intersection would mean that over here a uh, one should not come but a zero should come so if you are asked to write the corrected bit you are going to start from here you will write this whole row but you will change the intersection like one 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 this is 0 0 1 0 1 so we corrected it to 1 1 1 0 and we change this 0 into a 1 and rest of the line stays the same 1 0 1 this is how you find a correct bit from a parity block this table is known as a parity block the next method which we have is automatic repeat request or ARQ data to be sent is broken down into small packets after sending each packet the sender waits for an acknowledgement from the receiver now over here the word acknowledgement is the keyword you must have to include it now there are two types of acknowledgement one is known as the positive acknowledgement one is known as the negative or no acknowledgement what is a positive acknowledgement that you sent a message and you received a short reply i have received your message and what is a negative ma uh, acknowledgement that you sent a message but either you did not receive a message or either you receive a message that the packet you sent had errors so I am discarding it. They are both type of negative acknowledgement. An acknowledgement is a message stating data has been received correctly. If an acknowledgement is not received within a certain amount of time the same packet is resent and this is the second keyword for this automatic repeat request. 
if acknowledgement is not received within a certain amount of time the packet same packet is resent let's understand it with an example with a little diagram you don't have to draw this diagram in the paper you j this diagram is just here to understand now the sender received a packet uh, and the receiver checks it either through parity or whatever method and if it is correct then he sends an acknowledgement that okay i have received your message if the acknowledgement see over here it's timeout the acknowledgement reaches the sender after the ending of the time so in this instead of sending the other packet the same packet is resent packet one expected discard acknowledgement resent now this had already received packet 0 it was expecting packet 1 but it again received packet 0 so it has resent it has discarded the package that I already have it and it has sent an acknowledgement again that I already have this packet send the next one now this time the sender received the acknowledgement within time so he has sent the next packet and which is delivered and the next acknowledgement is sent now if by any chance the acknowledgement is lost during transmission then the same packet is resent unless and until the uh, sender receives an acknowledgement about this packet the next method is error checking method uh, echo check in echo check when a sender sends a packet of data receiver sends back a copy of same data or same packet this is the first keyword the sender compares the two packets this is the second keyword of data to conclude whether there is any error present or not the sender sent a packet the receiver resends the same packet back instead of an acknowledgement now it's the job of the sender to compare the two copies and find if there has been any differences between the two copies or not if th there is no difference then the next packet is sent otherwise the same packet is resent this is sort of an obsolete method now because it takes up a lot of uh, resources for the internet the whole packet keeps on moving forward and backward the next method we have is checksum ha what happens in checksum is that before transmission of a data block its checksum is calculated and sent along with the data the receiver recalculates the checksum mm. and compares it with the checksum sent along with the data if the two checksum matches data is assumed to be rece received error free now how do you calculate checksum in the question you would always be given the byte sum or the sum of the bytes so if the sum of the bytes in the packet is 255 or less then the checksum contains the exact value means if it is 115 120 254 then that value is said to be the checksum but if the sum of other bytes is more than 255 then the checksum is the remainder of total value after it has been divided by 256 for example we uh, we have over here two examples byte total is 1151 and in second example byte total is 115 now since it is less than 255 so we would say we don't need any further calculation we would simply say that this number is the checksum whereas over here since it is greater than 256 then we would divide this by 256 and we are going to get and what we get 4.496 now round it off and multiply it with 256 you get 1024 minus this number which you just got and minus it from the original number given in the question and whatever is the answer is your checksum or if you want to go with a shortcut then let me show you simply what you need to do is just divide the number one one five one with 256 for the one zero two four and the remainder is 
127 which is our answer the next method which we have and the last is check digit a check digit is a digit added to the rightmost position in the code and it is calculated using all other digits in the stream now how do we calculate check digit this is mostly used in the isbn numbers of your books add all the odd numbered digits together excluding the check digit add all the even numbered digits together and multiply by 3 add both sums together and divide by 10 if remainder is 0 check digit is 0 else subtract the remainder from 10 and resultant is the check digit let's have i look at the example for example this number is given to you and a dash is given to you in order to fill the check digit over here so what you need to do is you see this is the first number this is second this is third this is fourth this is fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth 10 11 12 now what we need to do is we need to add all of the numbers which are at odd places means this is the first number one is odd this is the second number we don't need it this is the third number this is again odd three is odd then fifth then seventh then ninth and then 11th we just add all these numbers together like right? 9 plus 8 plus 4 plus 9 plus 3 plus 6 for your um understanding i have given different colors to odd and even numbers and we found a sum of all the odd position numbers then we add all the even position numbers together for example 7 6 0 8 2 9 now you would say how are they odd 7 is uh, how are they even 7 is not even 7 is not an even number but it is at the even position it is at the second position and second or two is an even number we add them together and multiply it with 3 so we get 96 now we add both these sums 39 plus 96 135 in the next step we divided by 10 and the remainder is 13 uh, sorry remainder is 5 10 13 is a 130 and remainder is 5 now we minus it since this is not 0 we minus it from 10 10 minus 5 gives us 5 and that is our check digit so that means we would write here five and i have simply added the answer in the um, blank now sometimes the examiner is going to give you a blank and ask you to calculate the check digit sometimes it is going to give you a number and it is going to ask you that confirm whether check digit is correct or not you will go through the same method and see if your answer and the number at the rightmost position matches or not the next thing in this chapter which we have is ip address or the difference between ip address and mac address ip address is basically internet protocol address IP address gives the location of the device on the internet while MAC address is used to uniquely identify a device connected to the internet or a network. IP address is temporary while MAC address is a permanent address which cannot be changed. Or at least it cannot be changed by a non-expert user. You need to be very 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 tech savvy. You need to be very much expert if you want to um, mess with your mac address now there are a few terminologies which you should know isp stands for internet service provider it is any person or company that is providing you the internet sub service by taking a small monthly fees from you uh the next thing you should know is there are uh, two more terminologies okay so the next two things which you should know is a web browser it is a software used to navigate or open websites it what basically it does it translates the website code that is written in html into a presentable website which the user can view and interact with and a web page is basically a single page of a website any website next we have is HTML the hypertext markup language you should know this full form 
HTML is the language used to design or make websites and there are two components of HTML or it can be divided into two parts one is the structure the structure is the essential part of HTML code that forms up the basics of a website and presentation is the code that is written to modify or enhance the appearance of the website or to make it more attractive to make it easier to navigate or read for example CSS and JavaScript now sometimes the examiner asks you to diff gives you two pictures and asks or gives you two pieces of code and asks you to identify between which one is the structure and which is the presentation now an example of HTML is something like this these are known there would always be angular brackets these means less than and greater than sign in a code that is written in HTML or that is an extra uh, that is uh, an essential part of HTML code or the the structure part would always have angular brackets whereas the CSS or the presentation part is always going to have something like this curly brackets this is one of the basic uh, methods of identifying which given code is HTML and or uh, structure and which given code is CSS or the presentation since the details of HTML tags and uh, CSS script is not a part of our syllabus so mm, just remember this the angular brackets and the curly brackets this is the these are the biggest identifications of or the differences between structure and presentation I hope you have understood the lecture. Thank you. Uh, if you have any problems, feel free to ask me. Take care. Allah Hafiz.